In this video, I will discuss how you can reduce the electromagnetic frequency exposure from a cell phone. The number of mobile phone users in the world is 4.57 billion and is expected to reach almost the 5 billion mark by 2019. Even children carry a cell phone or use tablets, which are as bad in regard to electromagnetic frequency exposure as cell phones. Children are more vulnerable to EMFs than adults because their body contains more water. In order to know how we can reduce EMF exposure from a cell phone, we need to know how we use and handle this device. I will ask you a couple of questions so you can follow along and be aware of how you handle your cell phone. Where do you carry your cell phone when you go somewhere? Do you hold it in your hand next to your leg? Do you put it in your pocket next to your groin? Which body parts are you bombarding with EMFs when you hold it next to your groin? Your reproductive organs. Studies have shown that men who carry their cell phone in their front pocket have a lower spam count or inactive or less mobile sperms. How many men do you know who would like to have a baby but their wives can't conceive? Usually, if a woman goes to her gynecologist telling him or her that she can't get pregnant, they will check out the woman first before they think about testing the sperm count or mobility of the husband's sperms. The next question, do you put your cell phone into your back pocket at the buttocks? If you do this, then your phone is very close to your body. Do you as a woman stick it into your bra? This would be a bad decision. Not only will your breast be exposed to a high level of EMFs, but your heart as well. Think about it. Your heart works with electricity. The sinus knot induces the heartbeat. While your cell phone constantly searches for Wi-Fi connections, it pulses EMFs in higher or lesser amount directly to your breast and heart. Check out my other video I posted on breast cancer. How do you hold your cell phone when you make a phone call? Do you hold it against your ear or inches away from your ear? When you watch my video on EMF exposure from a cell phone, then you can see that the EMF exposure one inch away from the phone is still high. You need to hold it at least one foot away from your ear to lessen the EMF exposure to your head and brain. The brain works with electricity. All nerve cells depend on electrical stimulation that comes from the nerve cells. What will the EMF electromagnetic frequency do to your brain? I can't explain it, but studies have shown the impact EMFs have on mood, on the ability to concentrate and on sleep. Next question. Do you hold your cell phone further away from your body? and have it on speakerphone? I think this is a good option since you need at least one foot distance between you and the cell phone to reduce the EMF exposure to your body. This reminds me on my shopping experience the other day. I was in line at the cashier and the lady behind me started talking saying, Hello, how are you? Well, I thought she wanted to talk to me and start a conversation. I turned around to greet her as well. It's funny, but not really. What happened to us that so many people think they can't go through a grocery store without making a phone call, holding their cell phone next to their ear, or having a Bluetooth cockroach in their ear, talking loud, discussing unimportant subjects. Multitasking doesn't save us time. Multitasking distracts us and brings on more stress. Are people addicted to stress? Why do they need constant entertainment, conversations and stimulation? What happened with just going shopping, enjoying the great food that is displayed, choosing different kind of foods that are healthy for us, getting 
inspired by the fresh food for the next great meal idea or healthy school lunches for our children. I understand that some people need to have their cell phone with them at all times and need to keep it in 4G setting because they need to talk to a colleague or their boss. Let's move on to the next question. Where do you hold your cell phone when you browse the internet? Do you hold it in front of your stomach or your breast? Or do you place it on the table? If you watched my video with the title Wi-Fi makes us sick, keeps us sick, and I urge you to watch it, you will understand that we are bombarded with Wi-Fi all the time and everywhere. And in my video, I give you the most important tip you need to know when it comes to Wi-Fi exposure. You can change the amount of Wi-Fi exposure as well as the time frame we are exposed to EMFs. You have the power to make changes and lessen the exposure time and intensity of Wi-Fi signals and therefore EMFs. If we think about the effect of electromagnetic frequencies on the body, with the worst scenario causing cancer, we actually should rate EMFs as carcinogens. In fact, scientists refer to electromagnetic frequencies as electromagnetic radiation. Radiation, the same word as in X-rays. You are in charge of the Wi-Fi exposure in your home and to some extent in your apartment. We can change the amount of Wi-Fi exposure as well as the time frame we are exposed to EMFs. It is up to you how you use a cell phone on the road, in your car, in stores and restaurants. Changes that you can make range from no cost mitigations to mitigations that will require an investment. I use the word investment on purpose because you invest in your health and in the health of your children. Most of the devices you can use to reduce the EMF exposure your body is subjected to last a very long time, if not a lifetime. So let's jump into practical tips how you can reduce your EMF exposure from your cell phone. The best no-cost mitigation tip I can give you is to turn on airplane mode. You can do this when you don't need the Wi-Fi signal. You can do it when you are in your car. This is very important. Think about it. Your car is a metal box and the Wi-Fi signal has to penetrate the metal to get to your phone. The phone receives a low strength signal and amps up the strength to connect to the cell phone tower. This increases the amount of EMFs coming from your phone. By turning your phone on airplane mode, you simply stop it from connecting to the Wi-Fi signal and emitting EMFs. The other way to mitigate your Wi-Fi exposure from your cell phone will be a cell phone case to prohibit the exposure of EMFs coming from your phone. This enables you to carry your phone close to your body. Many people nowadays need their phone at their job and carry it close to their body so they don't miss a call and they have access to the internet at all times. I recommend the Defender Sheet cell phone cases simply because they are the best on the market. You can find those shielding devices on my website. The link is in the description. There you also find my video on the EMF exposure coming from a cell phone. Defender Shield also have air tube headphones, the earbuds. I use them all the time when I make a phone call from my cell phone. Pregnant women who want to protect not only themselves but more importantly their newborn baby can use a belly blanket. I demonstrated the mitigation effect of the belly blanket in one of my videos, which is also listed on my website and on YouTube. It is quite remarkable as you can see how the level of EMFs coming from the cell phone drop as soon as I use the belly blanket as protection. 
I personally use the belly blanket. One doesn't have to be pregnant in order to find it very practical and useful. Offer a belly blanket for men in a design that is not pink and feminine. Men can shield their reproductive organs from EMF exposure, which is especially important when they want to have children in the future and when they want to have healthy testosterone levels. When I use the belly blanket, I drape it over my torso while browsing the internet or using my cell phone to protect my breast and gut. It is up to us, up to you, to protect yourself from EMF exposure. As you saw in my previous video about the symptoms of EMF exposure. People developed symptoms from EMF exposure in the 1960s and 70s. Back then we only had 2G, not 3G or 4G as we have now, which is much stronger. So the people who experienced symptoms from low-level EMFs reported that their symptoms disappeared after they removed the source of the EMF exposure. Those people didn't have a placebo effect. They didn't think, oh, the cell tower is blasting me with EMFs, I probably will get irritated or depressed or get a headache. No, they had the symptoms first, then they found the source. And after they removed themselves from the source, their symptoms disappeared over time. It is up to you to protect yourself and your children. Now you have two great options. One doesn't cost you a penny and the other is an investment in your health. Check out my website. The links are in the description. Please leave a comment as you see fit. I love reading them. Subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notifications as soon as I upload a new video. Take care.